All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Atkins. I'm the current ANZ ACBS president, and I'm here today with Professor Richard Ryan, who will be delivering our keynote address, uh, one of our keynote addresses at the Perth conference in October. If you don't already know Rich, he's a hugely influential psychologist. Probably the thing he's best known for is a theory called self-determination theory, uh, which really talks about how, um, um, how important it is for people to be uh, intrinsically motivated and how this has all sorts of positive outcomes in terms of happiness and effectiveness in a, in a whole range of different areas of life. He's been so influential because his work has just touches in a very practical and pragmatic way on a lot of different domains, on education, on health psychology. Uh, he's a therapist himself, and um, obviously his work's also had a huge impact on thinking about motivation in mainstream psychology. So, uh, Rich, wanted to just briefly ask, kick off by mentioning that um, we had Tim Cassett, um come out uh, a few years back to our conference on the Sunshine Coast. Was Tim one of your students, I think? Or well, Tim, Tim was a student of mine, and, uh, and uh, since that time, has been a collaborator over the years. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'm you had him out, I'm sure, I'm sure he was a fun speaker. Yeah, he gave a great talk, which was really well received. We got a lot of positive comments, and his his focus in particular, uh, as you know, was on aspirations and intrinsic and extrinsic aspirations. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in ACT we sometimes have a tendency to sort of treat values in a fairly almost content-free way, um, and, or not quite, but almost as if as long as it's okay for the client and they think it's all right in the long term that it will be uh, a useful approach to take. But, um, you know, I guess sometimes we get clients that sort of hold up values like, or aspirations like getting to the top of an organisation uh, as being their sort of one main goal in life and we might see them having all kinds of impact on their family and on themselves. I wondered if we could kick off by maybe you could talk a little bit about um, just talking about why it's important to understand intrinsic and extrinsic motivation in, in the process of working with clients, in the process of therapists working with clients? Well, I think it's across modalities of psychotherapy, really on any, in any uh, time you're engaged in behavior change, motivation is a really important element. And the quality of motivation that people bring to behavior change is, uh, is really something we do need to pay attention to because it makes a great deal of difference in terms of the maintenance and transfer uh, of, our, of any gains that are made in treatment at all. This is really important in CBT, but it's really important in uh, no matter what modality of therapy you're applying, IPT, uh, even if you're using psychopharmacology, how people are motivated to engage uh, treatment, you know, it's really a key to success. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm looking forward to at the uh, conference in Perth is really some dialogue about motivation and its interface with behavior change uh, in the various forms it takes. Oftentimes, I don't think uh, motivational processes are made explicit. We know sometimes the aims and the tools we have to get to those uh, aims within psychotherapy, but oftentimes uh, how the patient gets mobilized uh, to make that change you know, it doesn't get explicitly discussed, and that's something that we do with self-determination here. Mm. Yeah, you've, I noticed actually that well, we were talking the other day that you'd um, done some work looking at overlaps with motivational interviewing as well. I wondered if you might just briefly talk about how your work touches on, uh, or is related to motivational interviewing? Well, a lot of what the research uh, in self-determination theory and intervention work has really shown that uh, when you can support people's autonomy uh, so that they can be volitionally engaged in any change that they're making, that's more lasting. It tends to be you know, a, a much higher quality form of behavior change. Uh, motivational interviewing is a technique that really started with the idea of autonomy support. So uh, its original uh, uh, process and practice very much fit with the theoretical tenets of self-determination theory. And so in our interventions, we've incorporated a lot of motivational interviewing techniques. And I think uh, a lot of motivational interviewers have used SDT as a, a kind of a, a theoretical explanation for the kinds of outcomes that are achieved through MI when it's done well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think there seems to me to be a lot of overlaps between how you would 
uh, how your sort of theoretical position views the world and how we might view it from a contextual behavioural science point of view. Some of the some of the overlaps that I see that are particularly important. Um, I think there's some overlap between the notion of psychological flexibility and the notions of intrinsic motivation. Um, you know, the idea of going after um, things that you most care about personally. Um, there's, there's also overlaps in terms of an emphasis upon mindfulness and an active construction of how we see the world. Um, and I think also both, both approaches are very strongly scientific and also very pragmatic. Um, with a real emphasis on on um, uh, trying to change behaviour, trying to change the world. Do you do you see those overlaps as well in those terms? And um, the, the number of things you just named there, Paul, are things I definitely see as overlaps. First, yeah. one, you know, one of the uh, foundations of self-termination theories. It's empirical foundation. You know, we've always been uh, really based about both experimental tests and also field testing of our concepts. Yeah. Another area that uh, you know I've seen overlap is the clinical practice associated with ACT, for instance, very much dovetails with the kinds of things we recommend as autonomy supportive practices uh, within the motivational theory of uh, of SDT. Mm. So you know, I, I think there's going to be a lot of points of convergence and dialogue, and that's another reason I look forward to the uh, conference in Perth. Tremendous. I'm, I'm excited. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Rich. We look forward to seeing you in Perth. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.